So, I don't know where I'm looking. Good morning. Um, just trying to, that's the wrong one. Just trying to finish up. Um, but I thought I'd turn on the cameras, do an almost live. Um, one of my favorite ways to go about doing this. Um, let me get this corrected and ready to go. So uh, what I'm doing today, we are in the beginnings of uh, February, uh, early February, and I've been tying since early to mid January, specifically uh, to fill my inventory boxes that I'm going to drive around uh, to all the bait shops that I do every spring and summer. Um, like always, we try to uh, tie as much as I can um, and always have the colors that are going to be the most popular. That never is the case. What you think will be the hot color, either you don't have enough of or there's another color that they're, they're asking for as well. All the different bait shops, customers that know how to get a hold of you and they want to pay full retail, etc. So uh, let's double check everything and we will switch over and turn on my face. So like I said, I've been tying since mid-January or so and... Uh, most everything for the inventory at this this stage of the game will be uh, plain bucktails, nothing fancy. Um, I will do the um, specialty patterns with the tinsel and the stinger hooks and whatnot. I'll do a whole bunch of those probably as we get into March. Uh, April is when... Uh, trout season starts here in New York State. Guys get out and um, start fishing because they've been locked in the house for a month or two uh, after ice season. And uh, they'll start going to the bait shops, etc. So I usually wait a couple weeks after trout season. Uh, usually the week before walleye starts and I'll make my first run of the season up to all the bait shops. Many times uh, shops will call me if they're you know getting a lot of customers in asking for certain things so they'll call me ahead of time. I might run up two weeks early. So this is just the time of year where I am just tying as much as I can and it's pretty tedious um, you know I am tying the same color over and over and over uh, I do have there's a video coming out I believe it'll be before this one uh, probably end of February or early March and it's just a quick little video and what I did is uh, tried to show you my lack of organization um, just how I organize and, and do do what I do um, I also found a neat old book or actually two binders that my father used to use as kind of a sales or promotional type binders um, that he would take to different shops and I think he would carry it with him during his regular uh, his his regular job as a salesman he traveled all over New York and Pennsylvania and I think he would carry these binders with him so it would have a nice selection of the jigs that he tied and the different things that he offered uh, streamers twister tails 
uh, bear heads, etc. Um, you know, everything Dad sold. It, during that time, he was also a uh, rep for Mustad. He was a rep for um, Universal Vice. You know, so he did as much as he could along with uh, processing tails that we've talked about and had videos on. So he had a lot of different spoons in the pot. He, you know, he definitely hustled. He had to hustle. Very similar to what it's like now. You know, we're at the mercy of the seasons and weather and Mother Nature. There we go, black and purple. Let's turn my face off just for a second. Black and purple, beautiful jig. The most popular color that I tie here. You'll get a glimpse of this, but I just redid a, a sheet. This is basically uh, how I organize what I do. It's just a checklist. The columns I have are the different size uh, Barumba heads, uh, which is the walleye style jig that we're tying today, flat heads, and the larger football heads. Then I have a couple blank columns here if I'm doing the smaller jigs or, or custom things. And I've just gone through and I've listed out, I, I went through my box, and I'm actually, right now we're doing the half size, and I'm doing better than I thought. Uh, because as I go through, there's certain colors here that I only need two dozen, three dozen, five dozen, two, three, four, two. Um, and, and it's only the most popular colors. What we're doing here today, I need to do a minimum of 12 more. Uh, what do we, where else we got? Oh, Sandpike, Perch, Fire Tiger. Th the three, probably the three next most popular colors. I need at least a dozen more a dozen dozen more each of those so so I keep busy um, and, and that's what's going to keep me busy all through February March once we hit April I'll be finishing up sizes a size or two that I'm missing um, maybe finishing up some of the the fancier things uh jigs with tinsel jigs with stinger hooks jigs with tinsel and stinger hooks etc um in packaging once april 1st hits i try to have my boxes completely full but also trays that i take along with with me with the popular colors that i know will sell right away I try to um, have a bunch packaged. It makes my it makes my stops go a little bit quicker. If I if if the shop that I'm selling to takes jigs that are in the in the bags, you know I'll either be out in the back seat of the pickup truck or um, standing at the gate of the pickup truck. Or many shops will have a bait cooler or a table or something that I can kind of set my stuff out on and I can uh, stand there and just package jigs. Um, but if I have them pre-packaged, the most popular colors, then uh, I'm not there that long and uh, I make my stops first thing in the morning and I keep, I make a circuit. Um, Central New York, up towards Syracuse, uh, Oswego, Owego, Ithaca. There's a couple shops down in the Catskills. I'll probably usually I'm itching to get out fishing myself, so I'll even though it's a little early when trout season first starts, I'll take a ride down to the Catskills to fish. But I'll also stop at a couple shops that I know um, also sell jigs and bait. 
and take some of my stuff. So I, I tried to work out a circuit that's as easy as possible uh, that I can get to in a day and um, you know try I try to make it as short as possible you know gas is coming down just a little bit that's helpful but it's it's kind of an expensive day if it cost a hundred dollars to fill the tank so might be a little bit noisy in the house today my son came home he had an allergic reaction he, he's never had a allergy to food or anything but he said he ate coconut this morning and a few hours after eating it now he's all red nitchy so I wouldn't be surprised I myself never had an allergy never had an issue And then I hit my early 30s, and all of a sudden I can't eat tomatoes. Like, what's up with that? So I must have... I don't know, I must have cut off a witch on the highway or something, and she gave me the evil eye, right? So... This was back 20 years ago. 25 years ago and at the time I went to a specialist spent the entire day with the specialist getting the allergy tests the old way one poke at a time and uh, his well-educated explanation to me when I ask how it happens he shrugs his shoulders and said it just happens your body changes what a waste of time right I could have told you I was allergic to tomatoes you didn't have to tell me but what are you gonna do he does say I'll grow out of it supposedly I grew into it so I'll grow out of it every five years or so the kids Uh, want to buy pizza we'll get pizza and I'll get my own separate pie with with no sauce on it right taste tastes great satisfies the craving for pizza for me right but every, every five years or so the kids want to get an extra pie and have me eat it and then they sit around and watch to see if I have any reaction I've always been fortunate. I can kind of feel it coming on. So if I take a Benadryl, stops it in its tracks. I don't, you know, I don't swell up like I, I would if I didn't have the medicine. So I guess it's fun for them. I don't know. So that's enough of our MedMD for the day. So what we're tying, like I've already mentioned, is a black and purple bucktail. I add my dark color first, as always. A few wraps towards the bend of the hook, a few wraps back towards the head. And I give it a twist. And I have a nice, bright purple. It's a really nice purple tail. I was going through um, counting, kind of checking on the, the tails that I have in my boxes ready to uh, tie with. And I noticed I do have to order a couple colors, but I noticed that between the last couple seasons and this year's deer tails that I processed. I have a fair amount extra, so I will, oop, there's a strange hair, so I will 
dye up a whole bunch just for myself of purple. That's a definite. And uh, might dye up some black. So I might, I, I think I have enough extra natural white tails where I can dye a hundred each and still have plenty of natural white tails to last me, you know, all year. So things are looking good on that end. Um, it does save a a lot of money that's probably my big, biggest expense is replacing tails I used to be able to buy them I think it was from Netcraft I would buy bucktails by the piece so they would uh, or by the pound rather so I would give a, a call there was a lady that my my dad used to deal with all the time I would call and ask for her directly and I would buy all their broken pieces and they would charge me by the pound. Um, that's how dad would do it. Um, you know, of course, we would buy tails once he wasn't processing them, but he still would have uh, tails for retail sale. So, you know, he would buy tails that were packaged and would, could sell them to stores. Um, but for just our use, for what we're doing here, production tying, they don't have to be pretty. It's okay if I'm getting half a tail, um, as long as the price is right. It doesn't matter to me that they're broken or not. Um, so I would buy, you know, I would buy a giant garbage bag full you know, 25, 30 pounds of tails. Couple, that'd be a couple garbage bags worth, actually. And that would last me quite some time. Keep things cheap. Tails, uh, last year and the year before, uh, what am I doing? Set that pinch down. Let's get our darkest color first. I gotta, God, I'm wasting my black. I got a half used tail here that I wasn't even snipping from. Um, like I said, this is <laughs> this is almost live. Uh, it will be pre-recorded, but I'm not cutting anything out. And if I'm not paying attention, as you can see, I do make a mistake. Darkest color first. So here's our black. So, uh, we're, I was bloviating about the cost of deer tails. So, over the last couple of years, the price of a bucktail has gone up what is it? 40%? 45%? You know, northern bucktail that you could get five to six dollars just a, as little as three years ago. It's gonna cost you twelve plus now. Used to be able to get petite bucktails for the three dollars a piece. And all furs have, have gone up in price, you know, rabbit strips and squirrel tails and calf tails. So that's probably our biggest expense. Hooks and thread, of course. are things that we buy often. How are we doing? Looking good, right? Um, hooks have increased in price dramatically over the years. 
dad always used to tell me, whenever you can, you buy extra hooks. You're buying a thousand, buy two, and, and squirrel a box away. It's better than money in a savings account. I thought he was, I thought he'd lost his mind. You know, it just, it's like, dad, I just sold, you know, a hundred dozen jigs. I want to take my girlfriend out. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I was thinking in my late teens, early twenties. And he's telling me to buy hooks. Um, but he was right. I, can, I wish I had a couple extra thousand of these jig hooks, especially the ones for these walleye style heads, the Barumba. I probably, I don't, I don't go through that many. I probably do six to 10 boxes a year of a thousand. And that's not all sold in one year. Um, that includes having drawers of blank heads that were cast up and ready to be painted. That includes drawers of painted heads. Normally this baggie should be full, but I'm getting towards the end of this one half Barumba in the black color. I do have a drawer on the table behind me just filled with blanks. So usually what I do is first thing in the morning I'll mix my paint. I'll sit and tie for an hour when the alarm goes off. I'll change seats. I'll paint. Usually takes me a couple hours This camera is ridiculous. Now I said a couple hours. Why did it f click off? Now it didn't do a burst like it had been in the last couple times. I, after <laughs> and again, some of my videos, the schedule, I, I've done a few extra, so I'm a little bit ahead. You'll probably see at the end of February, early March, a video where this camera just goes into a photo burst mode. See? And, I, and I, I've turned off the... I've turned off the voice command. That work? I think so. Um, but I don't know what it is. I don't know what I did different. I I don't move this camera. It's it's been in the same position. I haven't. I've been doing all my videos the exact same way the last few years. This camera actually has a layer of dust on the top of it because it has not moved from that spot. All I do is unplug the battery, the external battery. But I've been looking for cameras, uh, different cameras. Talked about this before in other videos. This Canon, what is it, an M2? M. I mix them up. This is an M200. Old Canon M200. So this camera's, what, about 10 years old? It was a great digital camera when it first came out. It's got all the features that you want in a digital camera. And it was still small enough to be fairly... Uh, portable uh, well not fairly it was portable and it was useful you could vlog with it and all that stuff you could hold it on the end of a selfie stick and it wouldn't break your arm for too much um, it would be better if you had a GoPro for that type of stuff at the time I 
but when I first purchased this, the only GoPro I had was a silver, which didn't have the clean HDMI out. And I just needed something to replace the M3. Is that what the other camera is? The other Canon that I had, which is basically the same camera, the only problem is the other one did not have clean HDMI out. So for, this is going back four or five years. If you watch my videos, I still might have had the picture in picture on some of them, but that was all done uh, after the fact. Um, I would do all my videos with the one camera um, in the same lens that, that this camera has, and then I would do all the editing and post. Then I got a mixing board. Um, just to nerd out just a little bit to start using tech, some of the technology. Now, in my when I when I finished high school and went to uh, went to a community college in the Catskills, I actually went to school for radio and television. Um, so what I have right here at my fingertips about the size of a keyboard a little bit smaller uh, and a silly laptop sitting right here uh, used to take up an entire room and it was run by three people uh, that's what I can do with this machine right here but because I got this machine the other camera didn't work so I, you know that's I was doing regular videos and not doing it much different than what we're doing here today but um, because of that background in radio and television I kind of wanted to spend a little extra money maybe geek out a little bit with the technology because it kind of is a hobby I guess um, because of my background in radio and television. I don't have much of a background in radio and television. I did my first uh, demo tape and took it to the local radio station where I was living at the time. And the plan was to not come home at the end of the semester but to live in the Catskills, which I did. I ended, I stayed down there for five, six years. At least five years, right? But applied for a disc jockey job at a radio station, took my demo tape, and they said, oh, you're awfully talented. Oh, thank you. And then they, I didn't mind being third shift. I didn't mind doing being the overnight DJ. Totally fine with that. But what they pay? I said thank you, but no. <laughs> and I think I changed my major the following week. Um, I talked to another guy also who had graduated a year before us and he was working at a at the local TV station here in Binghamton. And I had also, you know, I told him my my story on what they offered me at the radio station. And then he told me how much he was making at the TV station, which was, I think he was less. <laughs> and money isn't terribly important to me. I do work, I'm a, you know, I'm a social worker, for Christ's sakes. Uh... But between the radio station and then hearing his story, I got out of that business real quick. So very odd, you know, how things change and progress. I was certain I was going to work in radio and television, and I was 
two-thirds of the way finished with the, the degree. I think I, I had one more semester to go. Um, but, yeah, kind of kind of odd. And now we are 30-some-odd years after. Now, I, uh, I stopped pulling this. This string seems to be a little twisted. If I really pull this, I might... Uh, pull the collar out of place and I don't want to do that I know it's tied on well so I just cut one of the red lines so I can now just take it and pull it the rest of the way through it lo looks like see how we have a piece of the red thread on this side so the red thread itself broke as I was pulling it through that's why it was feeling weird just double check, make sure that it's a good collar. Not bad, right? Still looks good. But if I if I really pulled on that, it would have pulled the collar out of place. What time is it? I think we've been tying about a half hour. So Let's see, what do I got coming up soon? Uh, I did mention the one video talking about my organization or lack thereof on how I organize my inventory and plan my trips to stores. Uh, I think that video, I do a little bit of show and tell with the boxes and how I have all my Dozens of jigs in uh, baseball card style boxes. Um, I do find a couple sales binders that my dad would use to sell the jigs. Kind of do a little bit of show and tell with that. Uh, I got another video. What do we got? I've been mixing it up a little bit. Uh, there might be a video, another ice jig. I think that's coming up. I've done a few shorts. I've been uh, looking at some of the older videos and have some shorts scheduled from some of those. Um, work, still working on the second. Um, of the basics, you know, the the jig tying basics. Trying to trying to work out in my head, you know, the topic, the general topic is gonna be positioning and why we use the type of vice I do and how I set up and etc. Um and then adding, you know, we, we the first video was locking on the thread, but the the next thing will be locking on hair. Or material in general but I'm just trying to think through some of that in my own mind right now um, and like I've always done these videos are are mostly unscripted um, very rarely I, I had one or two way back in the day where I tried to sit down and actually make a script um, the only one that the main one that comes to mind is the video on the uh, permanent markers. I tried to do a similar video. I, I gave and I mentioned. I think I mentioned this before too. Gave myself a budget. I spent two hundred and fifty bucks on bobbins. I had I had a whole bunch of bobbins. Uh, couple on the high end price wise um, at least prices way higher than I would even treat myself and um, let's get a new string and then you know your typical bobbins that you'd find that most people use and I, I made the whole video and I hated it I said V-I-D-E-O, and it beeped, but it didn't change the picture. 
Um, unless it's it's not recording yet either. Um, I hated that uh, the outcome of that. I, it it didn't feel right while I was doing it. I could not bring myself to publish. And I'm using the bobbins that, that were expensive, the expensive ones in particular. I would try to say good things about them. Mostly I was just reading what was on the label. You know, the stupid, stupid sales crap that they put on a label that it's ergon, ergodynamic and ergonomic and glass lined this and porcelain that and how it how it's you know the best thing ever invented for a fly tying bobbin and the things were pieces of crap so i couldn't tell you the truth <laughs> i tried to in some of my descriptions but i when i w would re-watch it i realized i was sugarcoating some of the stuff um, partly because I was still new. This was three, four, f maybe five years ago. It was pretty early. It was around the same time that I did the um, video on the permanent markers. Let's take a, take a quick look at this one. Um... But I, but I hated it. I hated, I hated the process. I hated the. I hated the idea of just for the sake of creating a video and scripting out a video. Uh, telling you guys something that I didn't believe truthfully in my heart. So what it came down to in the majority of the expensive bottoms, bobbins, I thought that they were mediocre at best. Um, some of them were outright junk. That other, there's videos where guys swear by them. And uh, I, I just, I felt terrible. So that video never got published. I only, I... I do believe I finished editing it, but I never published it. I'd love to do something like that again, but I I don't want to script things. So I might sit down with a handful of bobbins and just tell you what I think about them. Uh, but I'm going to pick ones that I'm going to use. Um, and I'm going to pick bobbins that... I already have some sort of experience with. Um, and I use them for specific reasons. Um, but I don't think I'm going to do any of those um, gear review kind of things. Uh, just because, you know, if somebody wants to send me bobbins or tools or materials, and you're not going to be worried about my honest opinion, uh, I'm more than happy to do things like that. Um, I'll try out your stuff, but if it's wrong and I put it in a video, you know, I don't want to hear anybody crying. I said the V-I-D-E-O word again and it beeped. Do you hear that? Didn't change my screen. Anyways. Um, what were we talking about? Upcoming videos? Uh, so like I said, I'm going to, to, um, you know, do, do something, uh, as a second video for the, um, the, uh, how to the instructional type stuff. Of course, we're, I'm always going to just turn on the cameras whenever, uh, to do the almost live things. And like today, you could just watch me tie something that's kind of boring, um, plain jigs. Uh, I will be, I'm going to be tying these almost every day from now until uh, early April. 
I might have to switch out the SD card in that. I think the SD card in that camera has been there since day one. Um, I know I've taken it out and I've cleared it, but I maybe maybe put something new in there. I don't know. Or, like I've threatened this camera before, I have another Hero 7 Black up on the shelf there, and I'll just swap you because I don't care. Um, but I think that's going to do it for us today, guys. Um, been babbling long enough. Uh, hopefully I kind of touched on some things that were interesting. Um, my son's allergies, my allergies are not interesting. And if they are, you know, relax, nerd. Um, I think that's going to do it for us today. As always, hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any new content. Put some comments down below, good, bad, or indifferent. Let me know what you want to see in the future. Um, a big shout out. We've hit the uh, 1,000 subscriber mark. Um, hooray. Uh, by now, I'm sure we're, we're past that by the time this video gets out. And um, I got to tell you, I, I enjoy myself the whole time. I just noticed I didn't turn on this other light, so I hope... I'm not sitting in the dark, but like I said, this is almost live, leaving uh, all the mistakes in, all the good things in. Uh, you're going to see everything warts and all, <laughs> um, but until next time, guys, keep tying and tight lines.